Good evening. On behalf of all the members of St. Francis Episcopal Church and Christians everywhere, I welcome you to this celebration on this whole, most holy of nights in our Christian faith, the night that God chose to come and live among us as one of us. As Christians, we've been gathering for centuries on Christmas Eve to express and share the joy of the birth of Christ. We do so tonight, but not so much in a joy-filled world. There have been Christmases during years past when the world has not been joy-filled. There have been Christmases with wars and depressions and other pandemics, which have been celebrated in not so joy-filled circumstances. So one might think tonight, how can we embrace and embody the joy in our lives and hearts when suffering and pain is so prevalent all around us in the world right now? My friends, we can because Christmas joy is like no other. To embrace and embody Christmas joy means to embrace hope in the midst of a messy life, in the midst of our brokenness and the noise and chaos of the world. Christmas joy comes not in accomplishment or success or necessarily getting what we want, but in trusting and waiting. It is joy that manifests itself as we surrender to the reality of our circumstances, waiting in hope and trusting he who has come and what is to come. My mentor, Richard Rohr, once said, quote, Christmas Eve is an invitation to fall in love with God so that what is impossible might come to pass in our broke, frightened, and confused lives and world. I know that tonight I'm ready to fall in love with God again and embrace the Christ child. Maybe you are also, end quote. So my beloved, Christmas joy is about Jesus. It's about the liberation he offers that meets us in even the most disappointing of situations. It is about Jesus who listens, enters into our hearts and our hurts and our joys, who meets us exactly where we are and who understands and offers us hope and peace. So tonight, thank you for being here and I invite you to fall in love with God and embrace him once again. The Christ child within you, hug him. For tonight we celebrate the birth of Christ who brought life and light to all people and therefore we are joyous. For we know the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. So let us prepare our hearts for worship.
The people have walked in darkness. Have seen a great light. For to us a child is born. To us a son is given. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. The Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to his people on earth. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now let us recite together with great joy the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. You alone are the Holy One, for you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, you have caused this holy night to shine within the brightness of true light. Grant that we who have known the mystery of that light on earth may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven, where with you and the Holy Spirit he lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. Reading from Paul's letter to Titus. When the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of any work of righteousness, but according to his mercy, through the water of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. This spirit he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having just been justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Reading from Psalm 97, please respond by a half verse. The Lord is king, let the earth be glad. Let, let the, the multitude of the isles be glad. Thou in darkness and around about in the earth. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. A fire goes before him. And burns up his enemies on every side. His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees it and is afraid. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness. And all the peoples see his glory. Confounded be all who worship carved images and delight in false gods. Bow down before him, all you gods. Zion hears and is glad, and the cities of Judah, Judah rejoice. Because of your judgments, O Lord. For you are the Lord, most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. Lord loves those who hate evil. He preserves the lives of his saints. And delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light has sprung up for the righteous. And joyful gladness for those who are true hearted. Rejoice in the Lord, you are righteous. And give thanks, give thanks to his glory and name. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. 
This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude in the heaven of hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying, praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in darkness, and darkness did not overcome it. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. My friends, tonight we gather to celebrate Christmas Eve in a unique way, in a very unique year. So my sermon this evening will also be unique in at least one way. Because of this season in which we are now living, both with regard to the recent winter solstice and the darkness of the days, as well as our human condition as we navigate a worsening health pandemic, I will focus with you tonight on two separate gospel texts the first, a portion of that familiar Christmas Eve reading from the Gospel of Luke, which you just heard, and then a portion of another reading approved for use on Christmas by the Episcopal Church, but much less often used, from the Gospel of John. From Luke's Gospel, we hear, quote, In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. And then from the first chapter of John, verses 1 through 4, we hear, quote, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life is the light of the world. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. End quote. So I choose these two verses of these two texts for my message to you this evening because I believe they speak to us uniquely of fear and darkness, as well as hope and light. 
in this unique time in which Dr. Fauci and our president-elect refer to as the long, dark winter. In Luke's text, we are reminded that the angel of the Lord, God's messenger, came to them in the dark. And we are told they were terrified. And why should they not be terrified? I, I would be terrified. You know, when angels speak, one should be nervous, perhaps even afraid. Because while angels always try to comfort us by saying, do not be afraid, angels usually come to tell us something of great importance, and more often than not, it is something we'd rather not hear. You know, when you really put yourself in the position of those who were part of tonight's story, we certainly can emphasize, empathize with the terror they were experiencing. Christmas is a paradox, a strange mix of light and darkness. We are living now in some of the darkest times in human history. Many of us feel alone, lonely, depressed, of course, disappointed, anxious, and perhaps even terrified. So in many respects, our current story echoes that of those we hear about in tonight's story of the birth of Jesus. In spite of all of our joy-filled Christmas carols, tonight's gospel story, in part, is a story filled with stress, anxiety, and loneliness. Mary becomes pregnant out of wedlock. Joseph considers walking away from Mary to save his own reputation. And then, of course, there's the 90-mile trek from Nazareth to Bethlehem on foot with a pregnant wife and no extended family to support them along the way. When they arrive days later exhausted, there's no room for them in the inn, so they have to lodge in a stable area where sheep are fed. There's no mention of a midwife, midwife so I presume that Joseph had to deliver the baby himself, so that whole adventure is terrifying if you really think about it. Yet in the midst of all of that, messengers from God arrive on the scene. The first was an angel of the Lord who came to Joseph in his moment of crisis, calmed his anxiety, soothed his fears, and persuaded him to go ahead and marry Mary in spite of his fears. Then following that, more messengers, a host of angels, were told, appear just after Christ's birth to a group of shepherds going about their business in the fields in the dark in the middle of the night. And in the glory of the light that shone in the darkness of the night, the shepherds are told to pick up and go to Bethlehem, where their long-awaited Savior has just been born. They were surely terrified. But they went. They went. And that's the point, my friends. You see, the shepherds were not defined by their fears. That took courage and real faith, a lived out faith. Nowadays, frankly, it seems that we are more often than not defined by our fears and anxieties. But the shepherds did not let their fears inhibit their actions, and neither do we Christians. It's why we're here tonight. We don't deny our fears, we face them and are bidden to move beyond them. And the reason we were able to do so is found in the passage I referenced from the Gospel of John, which tells us, but has come into being in him, meaning in the Christ child, was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Don't you just love that? I mean, isn't that marvelous? That is the message of Christmas. This is the promise of God and the hope we experience when we live out our faith. Darkness of any kind cannot overcome the light of Christ. You know, I've said to you often, we are Easter people. We're morning people, we're people of the light. But it is so important tonight in this long dark winter to remember 
perhaps more fervently than we do any other Christmas Eve in any other year, that it is in the dark that God chose to come to us in human form. On Christmas Eve, we are reminded that what and who we celebrate, what and who we cherish and love is a product of the night. It is in the darkness that we look for that which gives us eternal joy and salvation. Christ is the light of the world. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. That's why we're joyous, friends. Even though we may be terrified, like the shepherds, let us not be defined by our fears and our anxieties. Let us not allow our fears to inhibit our actions. Let us not deny our fears, but face them and move beyond them. For as Christians, we know that the darkness does not, will not, and cannot prevail. We've been in dark times before, in uncertain, tough, and terrible times. And now, like then, despite COVID, despite continuing racism, despite sexism, poverty, depression, sickness, political turmoil, even our personal sorrows, Jesus is the light of the world. And this is the night of that light. This light is within us and beside us and above us and around us. In the dark, Jesus remains the light of the world. You know, the secret of the Christian faith is the world cannot get too dark for us. There is light. There is the night of light, which is tonight. This is the good news we are sharing this evening. In the midst of the darkness, we claim the light of Christ to be our own. Each one of us, in our hearts, forever. Tonight on Christmas Eve, we claim the gift of Christ, the light of the world. So joy to the world. The Lord is come. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not overcome it. Merry Christmas, my friends. And blessings. Amen. Let us affirm our faith using the ancient words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again 
in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With joyous and grateful hearts, we bring petitions to the newborn Savior as we pray. Hear our prayer. For Christ's church in the world, for all church leaders, including Michael, our presiding bishop, Henry, our visiting bishop, Michael, our priest, and others who serve in this place, may the people of God be Christ's incarnate spirit in the world, world, holy child. Hear our prayer. For our nation, that our leaders may work together to bring racial equality, and end gun violence and care for the earth, holy child. Hear our prayer. For people in the areas of the world that are experiencing political upheaval, catastrophe storms, catastrophic storms and famine and for refugees living in asylum, holy child. Hear our prayer. That our local leaders collaborate to solve homelessness, lack of affordable housing, public safety, and other challenges of the city. Holy Child, hear our prayer. For those who suffer from illness, addiction, and unsafe housing, mental illness, and domestic abuse. For those who are lonely this Christmas season, and for those who sleep in doorways at night, may we, the people of God, offer solutions and solace. We lift up to you those requesting our prayers, especially those who we now name either silently or aloud. Pray especially for all those suffering from COVID-19 and all those who are caring for those who are and their loved ones. Also praying for the people that are working on the vaccine. My daughter said that her company owns her right now, so keep their spirits high as they work a lot of overtime. Holy child, hear our prayer. We give thanks for our many blessings, for the birth of our Savior, for our families and friends, for the laughter of children, for shared meals, for personal thanksgivings, especially those we now name either silently or aloud. We give thanks for my mother, Phyllis and Jim. We give thanks for my family at St. Francis and for all those who see the light of Christ in the world and reflect that light in their dealings with others. Holy child. Hear our prayer. Holy child of Bethlehem, we, your people, come before you with our joys, worries, and fears. Accept our prayers and strengthen us in your daily life. We ask this in your name. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share the peace of Christ either with those who we're physically with or in any way you deem appropriate online. Merry Christmas, peace, everyone. Merry Christmas. Peace, everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.
Amen. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, and the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom, and you are exalted as head over all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks him thanks and, thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks for you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light and accessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and fill them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. So joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify you as we say, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your almighty work reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the goodness of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might not live longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, Having loved his own who were there, he loved them in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink this, do so in remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory and offering to you from the gifts you have given us, this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we praise you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in the goodness and mercy of your Holy Spirit, that your Holy Spirit may descend upon these gifts, 
sanctifying them and showing them to be the holy gifts of your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup physically and in spiritual communion with you may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ, to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the blessed Joseph and the blessed Virgin Mary, with our patron Saint Francis and all saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we're bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. Let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving as I proclaim your resurrection. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and the life to come. Amen. Dearly beloved, the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith with great thanksgiving. And now for those of you who have a consecrated sacrament, please feel free to communicate yourselves uh, uh, reverently or those whom with you are in person. And for those of you who do not feed on the Lord in your heart, knowing that he surely resides there on this most blessed of evenings. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Be present, be present, be present, Lord Jesus, as you were with the disciples in the upper room. Forgive me my sins, and draw near to me that I may be of service to you. And now let us pray together the prayer attributed to our patron, St. Francis. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. 
Where there is hatred, let us go love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. If you have a candle nearby, let's take a moment to light the candle to celebrate the birth of Christ, the light of the world. Dim your lights, reflect on the candlelight, reflect on the light of the world as we join together in the singing of Holy Night. May Almighty God, who sent his Son to take our nature upon him, bless you in this holy season, scatter the darkness of sin, and brighten your heart with the light of his holiness. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. May God, who in the word made flesh joined heaven to earth, and earth to heaven, give you his peace and favor, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this Christmas tide and remain with you forever. Merry Christmas. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. <laughs>